This is a Raspberry Pi powered Home Assistant wall panel that I built to easily monitor all of my integrations from my home office. I'm going to step you through the build process so you can build your own too. Like all good projects, the first step is to do some research. So I jumped on Google and started searching to find a few different examples of how other people have built their own wall panels so that I could learn from them and build something that suits my needs. One common option I found was to make a wall bracket for an old iPad or Android tablet and simply load the Home Assistant web page on it. This is definitely the simplest idea and has some benefits such as presence sensing using the front facing camera. But unfortunately, I don't have any suitable old tablets. I do have an old Windows tablet, but it's an i3, so the energy usage on it is probably a fair bit higher than an ARM-based tablet, and I don't like the idea of leaving the battery perpetually on charge, especially considering it's already several years old. It was about this time that Elecro reached out and offered me one of their 11.6-inch touch displays in exchange for producing a video about it. Being a fairly new channel, it is tempting to say yes to every opportunity that is presented to me, but I don't want to end up being just another review channel and I really don't have the equipment to do any sort of meaningful testing on products like this. I ended up deciding that if the product on offer was something I could use in a project that would be interesting to my viewers, then it would be a worthwhile endeavor for all of us. So I said yes and they sent it over so I can use it in this project. Let's do a quick unboxing and take a look at what is provided. In the box we'll find the display along with an assortment of accessories. I'll put the display to the side for a minute and have a look at the accessories first. The display uses a mini HDMI for input, so they have included both a mini to full-sized HDMI adapter as well as a mini to micro adapter which should cover us for most single board computers. There is also a USB-A to mini USB and a USB-A to USB-C for touch input and power. The display can provide 5 volts at up to 3 amps through its USB port which should be plenty for most single board computers, so all I should need to power the whole wall panel is the 12 volt 2 amp power supply brick that is provided with the display. They've also included a screwdriver and some velcro straps to help with cable management. Now let's take a look at the display. It's an 11.6 inch IPS panel with a resolution of 1366 by 768 with 5 point capacitive touch. The display is pre-fitted with double sided tape if you aren't planning to use the threaded mounting points included on the rear frame and it has a separate little button panel for the on screen display. They've also open sourced this product, so you can find all the schematics, firmware, software and even a design for a 3D printed enclosure on the GitHub for their project. They've asked me to mention that they also have a few other displays like this one, so if you need something similar make sure you check them out. I'll put a link in the video description for their crowd supply campaign for this display. Alright, let's get stuck into the design. I had a few simple goals for the design. Front facing speakers for audio alerts, a nice clean wife approved look, and a nice flush mounting against the wall all whilst keeping the housing as small as possible. I started by modelling up the display and then fitting components around it to see how it looked. I settled on some little 27mm speakers I can pick up from my local electronics store. They are rated for 0.25 watts with an impedance of 8 ohms. The display's driver board has an output for speakers so it should be able to drive these with no problems. In order to keep the bezel of the housing as small as possible, I tucked the speakers in behind the display and left a rebate below them to help duct the sound to the front of either side of the display. I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 to help keep the thickness down as it should provide enough power to run the dashboard. The rear cover fits inside a rebate in the housing so that it isn't visible from the side when mounted on the wall. The display control board is mounted to the rear cover on standoffs, so the buttons are only just accessible through the cover if I need to use them, but they can't accidentally be pressed when the unit is installed on the wall. I've also included a couple of keyholes 100mm apart to give me an easy way to hang it on the wall. Now that I've got all that sorted, let's get stuck into building it. The housing is too large to fit on my printer in one piece. I could print it in two halves, then join it and paint it, but I've got a CNC machine sitting here, so let's use that instead. I've got some of this laminated beach panel left over from my laundry tabletop, so let's cut an appropriately sized piece of that and throw it up on the machine and start cutting. I'm going to begin with the back side of the housing. I have drilled and countersunk a couple of holes in the middle of the stock that I know will fall within the cutout section. I'm going to use these to hold the job down. Let's start out with my trusty 4mm end mill and machine the rebates for the speakers and the counter bores for the M3 screws that will eventually hold the display in place along with the holes for the threaded inserts that will attach the back cover. Now I'm going to put a 3mm drill in the spindle and use it to drill the holes for those screws. 
Once those sections are complete, it's time to throw a 6mm end mill in as this is the largest tool this machine can really handle. You can get larger tools with a reduced shank, but I've found the little 1.5kW spindle doesn't have the torque to take a meaningful cut with them anyway, so there's pretty much no point in going bigger than this. First I'm going to use it to flatten the entire stock down to the height of the back of the housing. Then I'll do the rebate for the rear cover, but only in the sections where it's eventually going to sit. This rebate is only 2mm deep, so I can take it in one pass with this tool. I'm going to leave the middle of the stock at the full height so I can still use it to bolt the part down when I flip it over. Next I'm going to profile cut the middle section of the housing. I'm only going to take it through far enough to get past the front of the rebated sections and I'm going to leave a couple of big tabs so I can still rely on the bolts to hold everything in place when I complete the final cutout. And finally I'm going to run around the outside of the part using the same approach to cut it down to the final size required. Now that the back side is finished, we need to flip it over and finish off the details on the front. I'll countersink the same two holes from this side to ensure they go deep enough that the cutter won't hit them. Since I still have a 6mm end mill loaded, I'll go ahead and complete all the larger machining tasks on this side of the housing. First, the material gets faced down to its final size, then the rebate for the touchscreen glass is added, before finally removing the remainder of the material in the support sections where the screen will bolt in. Next, I'll load up my little chamfer tool and finish off the outside front edge. While this tool is loaded, I'm going to use it to centre pop the speaker grill holes. This will both help ensure the drill starts in the correct spot, but more importantly on this job, it will do a nice job of cleaning up the front edge of the hole. Now that's done, it's just a matter of loading up a 1.5mm drill and finishing off the holes to allow the sound of the speakers to escape. And that's it! I'll cut the internal bridges off by hand and give the whole thing a light sand to remove any tooling marks. Once that's done, I'll give it a nice coating of the same orange oil I used to finish off the laundry bench top to help bring out the colours and protect the timber. While I wait for the oil to soak in, I'm going to set up the software. To power this display, I have picked up a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 as it's nice and compact, cheap and should have enough power for what I need it to do. I've also had to grab a micro USB to USB on the go adapter so I can plug the touchscreen into the micro USB port on the Zero, along with a HDMI to mini HDMI adapter since the screen didn't include a mini to mini HDMI lead. For the software I'm going to follow along with a tutorial I found online. I've put a link in the video description. Now we just have to put it all together. Due to the length of the leads, the Pi Zero 2 needs to sit right over to the side of the housing to allow enough room to loop the cables around, so I've only been able to attach it to one standoff. Now I just need to connect the power from the USB-A on the display to the micro USB power input on the Pi Zero, followed by the micro to micro cable for the touchscreen, and then finally I'll use the included HDMI mini cable through the HDMI to mini HDMI adapter to connect the display to the Pi. As you can see, I've had to make a slight adjustment to the inside of the housing to allow room for the power cable to connect to the display. This is one of the benefits of working with wood, as I was able to just load up a spade bit in my cordless drill and punch a hole through where I needed. I was also only able to track down one of the speakers I need, as my local electronics supplier only carries one at a time. I'll add a second one when they next have stock. I've already bolted the display control panel to the back cover, so now I just need to connect it up and bolt the back cover on to finish everything off. Let's power it up. The system boots fairly quickly and loads straight into my Home Assistant panel. The touchscreen works nicely to navigate between tabs and control lights and any other devices once I have them installed. I haven't got a heap of interesting integrations set up yet that I can show you, but I can tell you that my fridge door has already been opened 42 times today. Those of you with kids will know the battle, I'm sure. Once I was happy with the software setup, I tried setting the file system to write protected, but once I did that it would no longer load the Home Assist page. I was planning to just be able to remove power whenever I wanted, but I may need to set up a shutdown button in future so I don't end up corrupting the SD card and the Pi when removing power. I've taken a backup just in case. I've uploaded all of the 3D files used for this project to GitHub, so feel free to grab them and build one of your own. Thanks to Elecro for sending this display over and thank you all for watching.